ready to unleash your pack power. Caesar's way. Picture this. You are five years old, and you already have the responsibility to help the family to keep moving forward. when they're calm, that's right. I feel that I'm very fortunate to have uh, my grandfather, who was an amazing, knowledgeable dog lover, and my father, who loved animals. Of course you get attention for that, you know what I mean? You went for that one. It's not just the love, it's the knowledge that they have. There's the understanding, there's knowing what to do. Uh, maybe my grandfather and my dad would not be able to explain to you why they just stopped you feeding for the animals. You know, and that's something that I learned along the way. How, why did I stop? He always had that in his mind about animals. And now that psychology he has, it's incredible. He is famous for all that. When I was 13 years old, I said, I want to be the best of trainer in the world. And my mom was with me. And I said, Mom, if I can be the best of trainer in the world, and she turned around and said, yes, of course, you can do whatever you want. That was when it started, saying that he had to be the best trainer. And not just a trainer, but someone who loves animals. When I was 21 years old, on December 23rd, I told my mom, Mom, I think I'm going to have to go. I have to leave. Where are you going? I'm going to America. At that point on, my goal was to come to LA. Because my goal was to go to Disneyland or Hollywood. Because that's where last year the team were. I was just clear, you know. To me, I was just clear who I wanted to be. Spelling is not an option. At one point, I was called a Mexican guy who could work a pack of dogs. Right now, I'm called a dog whisperer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the star of Dog Whisperer and best-selling author, Caesar Milan. Walking 30, 40 dogs 
off leash. I didn't know if that was illegal. <laughs> I know, I knew I was illegal. <laughs> I didn't know that the land of the free, walking dogs off leash, was illegal. Because it says the land of the free. So, dogs should be, or dogs should walk off leash. So, I observed that that was uncommon. But one thing that was very common in America, and apparently very legal, is the way they walk dogs. Which was extremely unusual to me, because I never saw anybody walking dogs like this. I never saw anybody wrapping a leash on their hand to walk a dog. I never saw anybody wrapping a leash on their waist to walk a dog. And you can ask them, what are you doing? And they say, I'm walking the dog. <laughs> that was common and that was legal. At one point, I also saw people holding themselves from a tree <laughs> and grabbing a leash and preparing themselves to tell the other person, you can pass now. <laughs> in Mexico, nobody does that. Holding a Pomeranian at the end of the leash. That was unusual to me. So, I wanted to find out why this modern society that I admire so much was not in tune with Mother Nature. So, I say, well, I should go to their homes and see how they relate with their dogs. What is their conversation? <laughs> so, I decided to go to an American's home. Everything was quiet. I knocked on the door. The state of mind changed. It went from silence
have other fake dogs. So that's how the, how the show began. Well, that's how the whole thing began. When I realized how this modern society was disconnected to Mother Nature. Didn't have an instinctual conversation. Let me show you how I grew up having a relationship with Mother Nature, with clothes. But look, see, that to us was normal. To see dogs mingling in packs like that, uncles, cousins, grandfather, mother, like that. that that relationship, that invisible leash, honesty, integrity, loyalty, trust, respect, love. That's all we knew. That's all we knew. Nobody was telling the dog, sit down, lay down. The dog knew what to do. So it was a very natural relationship. So what happened to dogs in modern society? <laughs> the human had a different goal for them. Apparently, fashion is very important. A plant in the back of the dog is very important. And this look is so important to a dog. But the human humanized the dog in modern society. And that the beginning of a dog losing his identity. And therefore, the dog develops side effects. Because dogs in third world country are skinny but they don't have psychological problems. Dogs in modern society are nice and chunky and they have psychological problems. You with me? The difference. Now, this is how modern human sees the dog, but how did the dog sees the human? President of the United States following a dog. Another president being told by a dog no. And the new president being dragged by a dog. In the dog world, who you are in the human world is meaningless. This is um, a woman that I admire very much. But in the animal world, who you are is energy, fame, wealth, or title. My clients are Harvard graduate, but they can't walk a chihuahua. Right? So a title coming from a university is meaningless to a dog. So it's very important to transform the relationship with our dogs or horses or any animal or humans to become mindfully aware and emotionally in tune. Because in the dog world, it's a, it's a very simple way of relating. It's all about who you are as a, as a mind or emotions. But do you know who you are? The only species that lives unconsciously as human being. Dogs are very conscious of who you are every single second. So a dog really reminds you to be in tune, to be grounded, to take responsibility of who you are at that moment. Not the title, not the fame, not the money, but who you really are in the animal world. The second thing that is extremely important to remember to achieve the connection that we all want is to honor how dogs relate to other dogs, which is nose, eyes, ears. Dog born with the nose open, 15 days later they open the eyes, 21 days later they open the ears. Nose, eyes, ears. Modern